I know what a lot of you people are saying. Colin, I am so tired of you calling LeBron James the king. I hear it. I hear it all the time. You know, the chosen one, the king, and it rubs people the wrong way, right? So many people in America are giving, 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 and he calls himself the king. And I was thinking a lot about that this weekend. I was thinking a lot about calling himself the king. And I got to be honest with you, I am upset with LeBron James too. Because a king, like King Tut, he just owns like a domain. King Tut, you know, he ruled Egypt. Don't get me wrong, totally impressive. He was like 15, totally impressive. But LeBron's more like an emperor. He's not just a king. He's an emperor. They have holdings across the globe. And I was thinking about LeBron. He's got land that he owns in Indiana. He's got territories in Toronto and parishes in Atlanta and Boston and townships in Chicago. He's not just a king. I mean, Henry VIII was a king. He married a lot. He ate too much and created a church. LeBron's more like Julius Caesar, who for the record was stabbed in the back by Brutus, E2, Kyrie Irving. You're right. You're right. King is offensive. LeBron is not just a king. He is an emperor. Toronto, Indiana, Atlanta's never beaten him in a game. Chicago, Boston. Kings can dominate one of those domains. He owns all of them. He conquers all of them. For the record, I warned you, Boston, last week. Remember on, like, Wednesday, Thursday, you beat Cleveland, went up 3-2 to two in this series, and I warned you, don't let it go to a game seven. Here's what I said. You know what Boston is? Boston's that kid that has a sleepover, and he has to call mom at 930 to come pick him up. Mom, I turned off the lights, and I saw monsters. Mom, it's scary over here. Mom, they don't make me snickerdoodles and give me warm milk. Mom, I don't have my NBA pajamas on. Mommy, come and get me. They're waving things as I shoot a free throw behind the basket. You do realize game seven at home is not like all the other home games. It's LeBron and veterans in game seven. Where he averages 35. We're in his last 25 playoff series. He's won at least one road game. And he'll win that one too. We didn't fall in love with Boston's 3-2 lead. Yesterday, the Celtics shot 17% from threes. They were nervous. This is a man's league in the playoffs. And they're the best group of boys around. Collectively. Jalen Brown, Terry Rozier, Marcus Smart were 8 for 42. That's nerves. That's too big a stage. Teeth chattering. Elbows shaking. Legs shot. Listen, Celts and Sixers, you're going to be so good starting next year. You guys next year are going to be amazing. But Philadelphia, you gave games away in the playoffs. Boston had it, couldn't handle it. Stage too big. LeBron played 46 and 48 minutes in the last two games. And do you know why he wouldn't leave the court? Because his mere presence had an effect on the young Celtics. Teeth chattering. Now, it should be noted, he is no longer a king. He's an emperor. But emperors can be overthrown. This has happened multiple times in history. You can overthrow an emperor. (laughs) But... Uh, The revolt can't be led by Marcus Smart. The coup can't be led by Al Horford. The revolution can't be led by Terry Rozier. The uprising can't be led by Marcus Morris. Got to do better than that if you're going to unseed the emperor. For now, the emperor still rules the East and remains comfortably in his throne. Tonight's very, very interesting. One hour from now, by the way, Colin was right, Colin was wrong. We do it every Monday, and I'm right and wrong all the time with both. So that's about 50 minutes from now. Doug Gottlieb next hour, too. 
Uh, so Golden State and Houston will play a game seven tonight. And um, that gives us an opportunity to see the, the second best player in the world. That would be Kevin Durant. He'll be on display tonight. I just want you to um, remember this as you're watching the game tonight. Now, Kevin Durant should be licking his chops. There's four or five things that really, really play, really, really play into Kevin Durant's wheelhouse tonight. Chris Paul's hurt. James Harden, not on his game. Um, Houston's never been in recent years with this group of guys in a Game 7 in the Western Conference Finals. Uh, I think it's fair to say Steve Kerr and that cast are better than Mike D'Antoni and James Harden's cast. Also, I think the Rockets, because they're only playing seven players, I think this is reasonable to say, I thought they looked really tired in Game 6. Those are all great, inarguable, immeasurable advantages for Kevin Durant tonight. But it's interesting. I was, um, I was, you know, fishing around the internet this weekend, and I kept hearing people say, "But Andre Iguodala's not going to play. Slow this puppy down." Wait, wait, time out. What, what, what what'd you say? So Andre Iguodala, who averaged six points a game this year, NBA journeyman, 34-year-old, that is your excuse tonight if Kevin Durant loses? That is your alibi, Andre Iguodala. <laughs> LeBron just made the finals with his second best player being George Hill. Three years ago, he made the finals with Matthew Dellavedova being his second best player. The alibi tonight is Andre Iguodala is so schematically vital for this team. Yes, so vital he scored six points a game this year. So Kevin Love, the All-Star, five times is out. Can you imagine me coming on this morning and saying, well, LeBron didn't have Kevin Love. You'd attack me. Kevin Durant doesn't have Andre Iguodala. And if he loses tonight, my bad. Do we have to give him another All-Star? And that, my friends, is the difference between LeBron James and Kevin Durant. The standard. The standard. The gap. Kevin Durant has the world's two best shooters on his team, statistically, Clan Steph. And if Katie loses tonight, he's going to need more help? Okay. Never forget... There was a headline a few years ago when Kevin Durant played for the Thunder. A newspaper, the Oklahoman, came out with this headline. It said, Mr. Unreliable. The newspaper had to apologize because Kevin Durant and his agent were deeply bothered by it. By the way, LeBron regularly has jerseys burned, and his message is, I'm good, got other things to worry about, like, you know, making my eighth straight final. Any team LeBron goes to, it is his team immediately. Even D. Wade's team in Miami. We are now in the second season of Kevin Durant. Here we are in a game seven. And if I asked you right now, who leads the Warriors tonight? We could not come to a definitive conclusion. The gap between LeBron, who would not have been able to use Kevin Love and All-Stars injury as an alibi, and Kevin Durant as the whispers start, well, Andre Iguodala is so vital for this team's defensive rotations. All, oh, everything lines up for Durant tonight. Chris Paul's hurt. Harden's not been that effective. They've got an experience advantage. They probably have the better coach, better bench, and Houston's only playing seven guys this entire series. If Kevin doesn't win tonight, I never, ever, 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 ever want to hear anybody even use LeBron and Kevin Durant in the same sentence. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.